Hi guys and welcome back, it's Nostalgic News here. Today I'm going to be showing you my Super Nintendo collection. This is actually part two. There is a part one. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it down below. And um, yeah, so this is part two. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to be showing you my North American. And then part three, we're going to go through my Super Famicom and my loose cuts, my power loose cuts. But yes, my first video was my English version copies of games and so forth. So this is part two, I'll waste no more time. Looking forward to show these off. So I'm gonna kind of flash them at the screen. Maybe I'll open a few boxes, show the contents. Maybe talk a bit about how I got to get these games and my experience with them, or maybe not my experience with the games. So first game, good start here. Demon's Crest. Now this game here, um, a game I not experienced until I was into my late 20s, early 30s possibly. Now this game, obviously um, didn't know much about it, never played it. As you get into the retro gaming scene, you kind of research and learn about games. But this is a Super Nintendo game I didn't actually play. Finally got a copy of it, and I must say I really enjoyed this game. Really good game. Graphics are phenomenal. Level design's awesome. The only thing I didn't like was the last boss. It found kind of cheap and hard, and it just kind of tarnished the experience I had with the game. But a very good game and worth getting if you're into that kind of thing. I originally had this game on uh, PAL. Uh, one of my original games, not this one, but one of my original collection games I had growing up through uh, parents and grandparents. I enjoyed this game. I think a lot of licensed basketball games in the 90s are pretty good. And I actually like Shaq on the Mega Drive. I don't care anyone says I had fun with it. I think it's great graphics. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't see the problem with it. I know it's a little bit worse on the SNES, but this Michael Jordan game was a very good game. Great shoot up now. Gradius 3. Moving on. Arcade Classic. This is a tournament edition, NBA Jam. And even if you wasn't a basketball fan, I'm pretty sure you may have played this in the arcades or you would have had fun playing this because it's obviously a claim and Midway had a lot, I think Midway had a lot to do. It's more, you know, the guys who probably did more combat basically made that game. It's so much fun as a basketball game. Of course, the special moves. He's on fire. It was a catchphrase, it was a probably overused pretty much back in the day when it came out, but a great, a great game nonetheless. I believe this is an early release on the SNES. A game I didn't have growing up and never really played until I was later in my adulthood. But Pilot Wings, really t difficult game. I was kind of underestimated how difficult that was. I remember actually playing the N64 one, but revisiting that one, I found that really hard, but it's good, very addictive. I was quite surprised how fun that was. So I showed this on my PAL. I've got an American copy of Super Mario Kart. I talked a little bit about that last time. Pretty self-explanatory this game. Most people have got sent, uh, played or had a Super Nintendo more than likely had this game. Um, next game is Super R-Type. Really want number three on the system. Number three is a phenomenal shoot up. Probably the, it's, come on, it's the best shoot up on the system, surely. Bubsy? Mega Man X. That's the only Mega Man game I've got on the Super Nintendo, unfortunately. I can see the appeal to Mega Man. I do have one kind of gripe with it. I don't like the fact that you can't duck. I just find that really annoying. Maybe it wouldn't be Mega Man without if it did have the duck, but for me, I just find a platforming, <laughs> excuse me, I don't find a platforming game very enjoyable without a duck. I just find projectiles coming at you and lasers and flames and whatnot. I just find the whole experience quite an irritating. So it does, probably going to get in a lot of grief from viewers for that one, <laughs> reviewers from that one, but um, it's just my opinion. Aesthetically, the game's amazing. 
the design the levels are good the boss battles are good the, the whole premise of the game's good it's just the ducking kind of ruin, ruin it, ruins it for me but Mega Man I have got some other Mega Man games on other systems but yeah what can I say Super Metroid here That game there, I never had grown up. A lot of these games I've experienced as through adulthood. Another one as well I've experienced recently is Axley, the Konami game. Pretty unique that game actually. I can see how it's not everyone's cup of tea. I mean, I enjoyed it. It's graphically good, sounds good, but I prefer the more traditional kind of shoot 'em up. Star Fox. Or Star Wing in the UK? I prefer Star Fox. Now, next game here. Definitely in my top five games on the Super Nintendo. And um, one of my favorite games of Konami's altogether, pretty much. Um, love this game. Sunset Riders, a great version. Very close to the arcade version. This is the second best version of the game. Fantastic game. The snares, oh my god, my hat's off to you. Konami did an absolutely outstanding job with this game. I think Konami overall did a lot better on the... I think their games on the Super Nintendo were, were better than the Mega Drive, to be honest. Let's be honest. I think the only other game, in my opinion, that was better on the Mega Drive, Konami, was probably the Tiny Toons. I enjoyed Buster's Hidden Treasure a lot more than I did Buster's Loose. That game is in here somewhere. Uh, that's just off the top of my head. I mean, sports games, I'm not sure, but Sunset Riders, Turtles. Oh, I mean, Con actually, I haven't said that. Pro Protect is pretty good on the Mega Drive Hard Corps. I'm not sure on that one, but definitely Sunset Riders and Turtles are a lot better on the Super Nintendo, in my opinion. So, F Zero, next one. I'm sure plenty of Super Nintendo fans enjoyed having this one. Great music. Oh, just my friend had that game, and I was. I spent a lot of time doing versus mode and taking a lap each around each. Yeah, phenomenal game. Uh, Soul Blaze here. Got this one actually in a acrylic case. I got this off eBay, and when it came in this, I thought, "Oh my god, the guy has gave me kind of like a, a graded case." But it, I guess it is really what they use acrylic cases. But um, the condition of this is um, basically new. It's never been played. It was sealed. The guy said he got it sealed. It's from America. He he opened it but never got around to playing it. The only, the only reason he opened it was because the seal was like kind of splitting and it was open, so it kind of ruined the whole look of it. But he, he told me that before I bought it, and he he's definitely not lying because it's absolutely my best conditions in this game. Hence why I've kept it here. I've got some good conditions, and I've even got some that are sealed. But I just think that's a. I've just looked at it. It's just it's so. Minty Fresh, it's, I love it. I just love that copy of Soul Blazer. Okay, next one. RPG I played later on in life. Really enjoyed it. It's not my favorite RPG, but it's really good. Different take, very original, is Chrono Trigger. I think we may... Um, I was going to open that one, I'm going to leave that. It has got all the contents, the two posters, the bits. You know what? I've changed my mind. We're going to open it. Let's get it open. Let me show you some games off a little bit. It's a good game. Really good game. So, it's not sealed, it's got kind of like a wrap around it. I can't open the game, it's the most, the most pain in the arse to get open. Let's have a look here. Okay, so we're opening the game here. There's the cover. And what I tend to do is kind of get like these bags. So there's the manual. It's got precautions and kind of like a flyer sleeve. You get a, these are pretty much 
You see this everywhere when you buy an American SNES game. Uh, there's sorry, there's precautions. Now two maps are in there. A very good game, very good RPG. And there's, the, there's the box and the car. The dust cover there. It's um, it's it's crazy to think that we'd never got this game. I mean. I don't know the background behind it, but why that did not come to the U e um, UK or the EU at all is, is beyond belief, really. But that's the way things were back then. We just games you just have, didn't have access to. You know, what, what could you do unless you import them or you knew someone or you went on holiday and you had a converter, yada yada. Really happy to own that game. It's been half the video. Packing this back up. Okay, finally, we've got that back in there. Won't be a second, and let's pop that back in. Okay, throw the trigger. Next one is two Star Wars games. We've got Empire Strikes Back, and the original Super Star Wars. The third one was on my power collection, you'll see that in my previous video. Let's pop those down there. Ultima, The Force of Profit. I've booted this game up, not gone for it. I'm just thinking my other experience with the game, probably on the Master System. Ultima 4, I believe it was. The Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. I've played this game, never beat it. I'd actually like to hear some feedback on this. Is the game worth going through? Is it good? I don't, how does it stand up and fare against the other Disney games? Stunt Racer FX. Makes use of the FX chip. Not a too bad game, actually. Ah, Street Fighters. Let's do the Street Fighters next. We got the original. I do prefer the gold colour in the UK, but I've got this version. If you haven't played Street Fighter 2, where have you been? <laughs> Second one, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Again, I probably like the, the colour. Well, I do. I prefer the colour in the PAL. But I've got this copy. Super Street Fighter 2. Don't like Super Street Fighter 2. Just not keen on it. I just find the game, I don't know, I like the meat of the original one and I think the original is the most classic iconic one for me. The second one, you know, it's improved, obviously they improved. I, I didn't like the, I think the announcer changes. It just, I wasn't keen on the new characters. I mean, the intro is pretty cool. I remember the intro in Ryu kind of does the, the stance and the juggle and the fireball, but I think by that time when that came out, I'm, I was kind of like oversaturated with Street Fighter and I just wasn't on board. For me, it was more, in th I started making the transition to the Alpha games where, I, in fact, I think the Alpha games are the, 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 the peak of Street Fighter series, the best, especially number two. I mean, it's an amazing game. Anyway, moving on, we've got Super Strike Eagle here. This one has also got a cellophane around it. Very, very nice condition, in fact, that one. And I got that for a very, very low price, in fact. I think five pounds, maybe it was. Batman Returns. He's okay, I mean. It's Konami, I don't usually criticize Konami, but you know, there's better beat em ups out there. But it's not terrible, in my opinion. <laughs> Here's a game I had experienced with my friend growing up. He had a, the car, I think he had, I mean, no, actually, tell I, he might have the box. But I remember, I just remember, it's very vague to me. I remember him having the game anyway, the cart maybe. Uh, he had this, the power version. And there's something really unique around this game. We had, kind of had like an inside joke with it. Um, I believe when you get a power up, it goes, hallelujah, and the, the sound uh, bite there, we just, we just find that really funny and we just kind of imitate that. And, had a catchphrase going for that for quite a while that game but um really good game 
Next one is Actraiser 2. I've got the first one laying around here somewhere. Well, that's the second one. Final Fantasy 3, another great RPG. Probably one of the best Final Fantasy RPG games there. One of the best Final Fantasy games, in my opinion, again. This number 7, uh, 9, and 10 are possibly my favourite. Yeah, 10's, 10's probably my favourite. 7's definitely up there. And that's probably third, comes third, that one. <laughs> probably one. <laughs> this, is, this and Sunset Riders, man, are crazily. It's just crazy good. I mean, this game, I love this game. I love the Castlevania series. Um, this is definitely the one that tops it for me, this one. It's great. The Mega Drive one's great. Um, Vampire's Kiss or Dracula X, which I do have on the Super Famicom, is also good. But this one, the music, just perfection, really, in all its glory. Here's a game I've got which I've never played, and that is Draken. Kind of like a dungeon crawler RPGs game, and just take it looks pretty good actually. Probably missing out on that one. Maybe we should get around to having a go on that one. Here's a series I should spend a bit more time with. I want to get it on the N64 actually. This is the Mystic Ninja, the Legend of actually. I can't talk about that one too much. I have no idea much about it. King Arthur's World, compatible with the Super Nintendo mouse. Another Konami game, brilliant game, Contra 3. So we've got here two more RPGs. I do enjoy the series, I've got three and four on the PlayStation 1, and they are Breath of Fire. And Breath of Fire 2. Lufia. Played this game, not completed it. Around that time, there's so many turn based kind of RPGs at the time, but this is a good game. I think, I believe this is the better one, so I've heard. There's a second one which I do need, and I probably will get that at some point. Love the artwork on that game. Uh, next game is Lagoon. Next game is Lagoon. And um, yeah, kind of another RPG on the SNES. <laughs> I've played it, not completed it. Here's a game I've nearly completed, and it's quite tough. Well, it's, not, it's too tough, you've got to do a lot of grinding. This is a really good copy here. The Seventh Saga. Now this game here um, is probably one of my all-time favourite arcade scroll and beat 'em ups. I like the music. I like the theme. I like the characters. I think it's very well polished, and it's just an overall great game. That's one of my favourites, and that is Knights of the Round. I absolutely adore this game. I prefer this over Final Fight. I think some of the other arcade favourites of mine are Vendetta. I think there's just some Vendetta, well, obviously Final Fight. Vendetta, this, um, and Tales in Time are probably my favourite scrolling beat em ups. Now, while we're on the subject, we might as well show that one, next one, which is Tales in Time. <laughs> just another hit. Straight out of the park with this one, Konami again, Tales, and I've got a lot of memories, this, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of memories, this, memories with this game. In the previous video I mentioned I uh, experienced Mortal Kombat 2 in America and also I stood in a hotel in America growing up and they had this on the arcade. In the hotel there's an arcade that had this game and uh, Golden Axe, Death Adder, you know Golden Axe 2, the, the Revenge of Death Adder that was in there. And I'd come back from a day out from a theme park or whatever we were doing in Orlando at the time and this would just be blaring out. Cow, you know the theme song that goes and cow, you know the you know turtles in time soundtrack. And then I remember on one occasion I'd play it, and outside that arcade there was kind of like this rental vending machine thing, like a cigarette machine, but in there was like um, VHSs. I remember we got Gremlins 2 on a, we rented that to take up to the room and watching the, v, uh, v, v, uh, the VCR player. And it's just memories like that that stay with me for they're timeless. But yeah, it was a great game. 
Gremlins 2 wasn't even out in England. I think the first one was probably still out. And I've never really got bored of that game. I could play that right now and play it. Absolutely phenomenal game. Next game, it's a good beat em up. It's okay. I find it okay. I didn't get into it like I did Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter at the time, but it, I recognise it's a good game. It's very heavily, obviously you'll know this if you play this, it's very heavily on combos, and that is Killer Instinct. And I've actually got a sealed copy here. I had the PAL version, it's pretty tatty, so I sold that and got myself a nice mint one. Now I don't usually discuss prices, but in this case I might just break that kind of law, I, rule I give myself, but I think it's not about the price of the games usually. Or I mean it's nice to you know kind of show off how what price you got from but this one I did get really cheap and the reason I mentioned that because this is a sealed game I was quite I just got this on a bid one day about five years ago and I think I got it for like £28 on bids. It's one of these auctions ends that are like a kind of maybe not a popular time and I just snagged it for 28 quid and I just thought that was kind of like really cheap for a sealed game, especially a Super Nintendo game. I mean, I don't know how much it's worth now, but that seemed really good at the time. Next game, another great game on the system, is uh, Super Punch-Out. Got the NTSC version here, really nice copy again. I like the power one. I like the power colours, but I've got that copy. Again, another one in the PAL. I've got the cart and the manual, this is a PAL. But the American version. It just feels so much faster. I don't know what it is, but it just really does. And the same with Castlevania. If you play Castlevania, oh my god, it's so much faster than the English one. Final Fight 2. Hmm. Not that keen on this, really. Just not that keen on it. I think Capcom got a bit lazy on number 2 and 3. No, I wasn't feeling it. It's not bad. It's not terrible, but I just found them too repetitive, the second. Especially the third one. But I'm happy to have it. Here you go, I was mentioning this early on. Tiny Toons Adventures, prefer the Mega Drive one by a long shot. Obviously they're not the same game, but the Mega Drive kind of, the way they took that one and made it to more like an adventure game. This just kind of, you just kind of breeze through this pretty quick. You do a lot of running. I just, it just wasn't for me. I'm sure people like it, but um, probably one of the cheapest games on the system to get that. UN, uh, UN Squadron. This is nearly sealed, really good condition. That's Doom. It's just open at the um, side there. For me, the PlayStation One's the best version of that game, but it's Doom. You know, it's an awesome game. You've got to have Doom. Yeez 3, probably my worst condition game. Got this from a boot sale for two pound, no manual. But to see that laying there, and the guys went two quid. Cool, who am I not to? Next game is, am I going to say this right? Abitus, Abitus, Orbitus, Orbitus, Orbitus. There you go. We got there in the end. I haven't, I haven't really played it to be honest. Kind of like side view stage, emphasize speed and that. I was going to say it's kind of like Shining in the Darkness, but it looks a bit more different to that. Looks pretty good actually. It's funny, you kind of stand back and take a look and you kind of want to talk yourself into playing these games, and why not? Next game, Aladdin. I'm not going to say it, everyone says it, I'm not going to say it, but that's Aladdin on the SNES. Ball Brothers. Here we have Super Mario All-Stars. This is a really good game and also what makes this really good is, I mean, if you didn't experience the Nintendo ones and you obviously seen them growing up and then you were to get this, I mean, having all games on one, one car is phenomenal. Especially having the original, true original sequel to Mario Brothers, the Japanese one, The Lost Levels. Really good game there, hours of fun growing up playing that one. Uh, Uniracers or Unirally in the UK. Surprisingly pretty fun, a decent game. Um, you probably kind of like blow over this if you're out to buy a game when you're younger, but get your hands on it, really fun. You, you have trouble putting that game down, believe me. Uh, next one is Joe Mac. Next 
Now, moving on, I'm going to show the next one I've got here because they're not official, kind of like official games. Uh, I bought this from PlayAsia, PlayAsia at the time. I was going to start buying these kind of like different variant games, these third party ones, that, that kind of these collection ones. But I kind of refrained from doing it. So I did it once or twice, in fact, and then I just stopped because um, I just didn't like having games that weren't original. But I went for it and I wasn't too keen on it in the end. It's Iron Commando. And no disrespect to the uh, countries, the, the companies that make these games. I mean, you've got my money, it's too late now, but I just prefer the original. Um, it's nice, but I think if I'm going to have a remake of game, I think at this stage I'll probably have it on a, like a more modern console, like the PlayStation 4 from Limited Run. I don't know, it's just me. Joe Mac, there you go, the collection. Getting near the end now, actually. It's about one, two, three, four, five, about nine left here. Simpsons, Bart's Nightmare. Act Razor, yeah, I knew I had it, the first one. Kawasaki Superbikes. The Blues Brothers. Vortex makes use of the FX chip again. And then we got Flanix. <laughs> now, you're not going to often hear this, but I absolutely adore this cover. In fact, I bought this just for the cover, not even the game. It was the cover first, then the game. I could, it's kind of like the irony. It's like this if you look at there, you've got the spaceship up there flying in the galaxy and this guy just playing the banjo sitting around in probably like North Dakota or somewhere in America and I, I kind of get the front cover <laughs> a lot of people were saying like a wind up that this is the end boss in the game it's total bullshit by the way but it just kind of makes you laugh doesn't it like this big intergalactic space wars going on and you're uh, just this guy's just sitting there playing the banjo nonchalant to it all I suppose that's kind of the irony of the um, illustration of the front cover but I, I love it I don't know why, but I do. And it's not a bad game, to be fair. It's a good game. Sky Blazer. I assume that's, yeah, exclusive to the Super Nintendo. Um, King of Dragons. Now, this is a good game. But I do prefer, I mean, it's got a lot of levels, but I do prefer the scrolling beat em ups to maybe have a longer levels. I think if this just did a bit more scrolling and not so more emphasis on the bosses, I'd probably return and play, play this game a bit more, but it's still a good game. Totally respect it, but um, it's not my favorite of all time, but great game nonetheless. So we'll leave it there. That is my Super Nintendo Part 2 collection video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's my American. Some of you may agree with what I've got to say about my games, some of you may not, but I'm happy to hear in the comments below. Please do that, and if you like this content, there's going to be plenty more collection videos, and as the uh, year progresses, or well, next year, when this lockdown finally leaves leaves us and the virus finally gets disp disp blah, 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 dissipates away, then perhaps we, I'm going to tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to do some boot sales. I'm going to get myself a little camera or a GoPro or something, and we're going to film some boot sales and do some pickups. I'm kind of a fan of the boot sales. Um, it's not so much maybe necessarily getting the games. I just like the idea of the hunt because as time goes by, there's less and less shops available to me anyway. So that's something I'm looking forward to do. And we might branch a little bit away from the games, maybe toys then. But if you like Sega, handhelds and contemporary, contemporary gaming, then please consider subscribing because you're gonna, you don't wanna miss out on my full Mega Drive set that will be coming soon. I'm going to be showing some other games first from other systems, but the Mega Drive collection I will be showing that off complete over a, a few long videos, no doubt. But thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you on my next video. Part 3 will be up within the next 7 or 10 days. Um, I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Nostalgic News. Bye for now.